Good morning. Welcome once again to yourprimetimesports.com for another edition of Double G Sports Talk Saturday, live from Batten's Donuts in the Paragool Plaza here in uh, overcast Paragould, Arkansas this morning. I'm Dave Grimm, and alongside me is Clifton Garmreth. Good morning. And we, uh, we're we down to the last week of 5A East basketball action. We're down to the nitty-gritty now. And uh, a couple of different things happened last night. Uh, in girls' action, Paragool clinched the number one seed. It's it's over and done with. They no matter what they do this week, they are going to be the number one seed representing the 5A East in the state tournament. Also, and this didn't actually happen last night, but it happened last week. The top four teams from the 5A East in the girls have been decided. Now the order is still up in the air, but we already know for sure what four teams will be playing in the playoffs representing the the uh, girls in the 5A East. And those girls are uh, Pear Gould, BB, Green County Tech, and Nettleton. That's a done deal. BB, Green County Tech, and Nettleton are battling for seed here in the last week. Now, in boys, <clears throat> nobody has clinched what seed they will be, uh, but three of the top four teams have clinched a trip to the playoffs, and that's four City, BB, and Green County Tech. They have, they're have they automatically in as of right now. There the are two that's battling for fourth is Nettleton and Blyville. Three, three. teams. Who's Paragould it? got up into the mix last night with their win over win, and they are, if, if Nettleton were to lose out yeah. and Blyville were to lose out, Paragould would be in. They would be in. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. They would be tied with Nettleton. If Nettleton lost out and Paragool won out, does Paragool play Nettleton one more time, or have they played them twice already? I don't remember. I'm. I'm. So I'm, I'm. I'll investigate that. If the answer is Paragool and Nettleton have already played twice and Nettleton won both games, then Paragool is not in the hunt. If they still have to play Nettleton one more time, and Paragould is still in the hunt. That's your answer right there. So it's either Nettleton and Blyville or Nettleton, Blyville, and, and Paragould that are in the hunt for that last spot. Right. <clears throat> so you got, uh, uh, well, last night, Green County Tech girls, oh, my gosh. They uh, three starters completely out for the game, did not even dress out. And at Batesville, the worst team in the league, they got a defeat handed to them last night. Well, uh, you know, I know Coach Harding has a lot of faith in his uh, in his uh, young ladies that uh, come off the bench and stuff, and I do too. I've seen I've seen I've seen him play so many times this year, um, and I think he just he went into Batesville uh, wanting to give Allie and Alexi and Olivia a night off um, and rest them. They they need some healing. Uh, as we take the turn into the last week of the season and uh, follow up that following week with a state tournament, hosting of the state tournament. And uh, who would have thought that we'd have leave baseball with a loss, you know? But we just, we never did get, we never did jail to last night. They, they weren't in sync. Nothing was, was working. And um, so it just, you know, the only the only time that I seen the uh, the girls really in sync and in flow was after they came out at halftime for about two minutes. They had a good run there for about two minutes. Other than that, yeah. Well, I mean, it was all sophomores that they were trying to replace the uh, the uh, starters with. There may have been one junior in that mix, but it was mostly young and uh, not as experienced girls. I mean, they've got six seniors. They don't play these girls that often unless they're way out ahead of somebody. Well, no, no, not necessarily. Uh, Beasley comes in off the bench in normal playing games. I mean, you know, heated but, contest. Right. Uh, Brandy Mize is usually one or two off the yeah, bench. I'm talking Maxwell maybe. But, but and you're right. But, Todd. but Maxwell and Todd usually. Uh, but they have been in some in some games this year. But it's not necessarily something that they – have to have a big lead. He uh, he only has 14 total girls on his bench. Right. So you really can't use that that reasoning or that excuse. Those girls, with the exception of maybe two, three, 
do, do not get to see a lot of playing time. Most of those other girls are usually in the mix of every game, okay? But so, they've never run the show before. No, but that's where you have your two leading guards as uh, Olivia Pritchard and Lexi Gramlin sitting on the bench over there in dress clothes. And so that's what he had to go with. Now, don't, I'm not a coach, and I'm not I'm not suggesting anything here. But if it would have been me, I would have I would have pulled those girls out on the wings, and because I think it would have it would have spread some things out a little bit more, and and getting that ball in the in the hands of uh, of the little left hander of uh, of uh, Whitney uh, Maxwell, she knocked down two back to back three pointers. Yeah, she got hot there for a few minutes. Yeah, and but you know. Uh, Coach Harding does a great job. He, 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 I could see the frustration on his face. But I really thought that they would go in at halftime and uh, regroup. They were only, what were they, three points down at halftime? Three, uh, yeah, that's yeah, right. 22-19, right. I believe correct. it was. That's correct. And, you know, but they just never, they never could get it going. And i tell you what I've seen in the second half, halfway through the third quarter. Baseball got the smell on a win. And they they could they could tell that it they, energized them. Yeah, and and their energy level went up, and their determination went up. And the more that happened, the more the tech girls became deflated, and just kind of like said, you know. Yeah. Well, that's what happened. It was just, last night. It was now, just it, very disappointing. It didn't keep them. I mean, they were already going to the playoffs. The top four seeds had been decided by last, I think, Tuesday. Green County Tech already knew they were going to the playoffs. But it could come in crucial when it comes to seeding because now Green County Tech and Nettleton, 8-4, and four, tied for third. And Green County Tech and Nettleton, I believe, have split. Has the Nettleton girls beat yes. Green County Tech? Yes, that's yes. right. Yes, Tech girls beat Nettleton at their place, and uh, they beat us at Tech. So with or, two... Right. No, so I don't remember. I've seen we've seen so much basketball. Well, with two I'm ready games for baseball left, season. With, with two games left in the season, that could be that Batesville loss could be crucial when it comes to seeding for the state tournament. Now, I can answer the question that I just raised moments ago about whether or not Paragould is in the hunt. The answer is yes. Their next game is at home against Nettleton. Paragould will play Nettleton if Paragould beats Nettleton. And they win their last game, and Nettleton loses their last game. And if Blyvel loses one of their next two games, Paragool can sneak into the state playoffs in a boys' side. Well, that would be good for this community because that would put all four teams in the state playoffs. That's right. I uh, hear at the uh, Eagles' nest, and uh, and it would be exciting for the Paragool crowd because you know the boys have started off so slow on that side this year. Uh, but they somehow have built some momentum. And, and surprisingly, as you and I have talked about, for some reason, they've beat Blybel twice. I, I know. And one of those games, the, the, the last one recently, was with McKillian in the, in the lineup for Blybel. And how they did that, I Paragool. don't know. That yeah. game was here at Paragool. They beat them at Blybel without McKillian. And, uh, and if it comes to a tie between Blybel and Paragool... Paragool's definitely got the tiebreaker oh, yeah. sweeping Blyvel this yeah, year. That's right. So uh, we're going to be keeping a close eye on that. That's the only suspense really left in the playoff picture in the 5A East is to see who will get that fourth spot in the boys. And then the other suspense is seeing how they're going to seed. Uh, so what we're going to do right now, let's, I believe, uh, is take our first break, and then you're going to come back with yeah, our let's, first let's guest Let's touch today. on our guest real quick before we go to that commercial break. Okay. Uh, we have Coach Bruce Hunt for the first time this year. Uh, this morning, our first guest to talk about next week's uh, Green County Tech baseball banquet and uh, the upcoming baseball season. And then we have uh, Monica Specking, a uh, IFBB pro, uh, stylist pro. That's bodybuilding. Uh, she's here to join us this morning to talk about uh, uh, working out and staying healthy and all those good things. And believe me, I'm going to be listening hard and heavy because I need to start staying healthy and then we have coach scott bolin uh the head basketball coach of green county tech and then coach trey harding and i didn't blame him one bit is not going to be with us this morning because he called practice at nine o'clock this morning and he texted me last night and said sorry i'm not going to be there i've got to get some things ironed out with my girls and i told him 
I fully understand, Coach. If I was in your shoes, I'd probably be doing the same thing. Well, he's thing. got two games left, and we don't – do we even know if those three starters that were out will be back before state tournament? Yeah, they'll be back. He, they've all – they're all going to play. Uh, Allie Wilson is going to play with a, a, a brace around her ribs. Uh, Alexi will play with a brace on her knee. And I'm not sure what Olivia is going to do with that torn uh, oblique, you know, in the stomach area. Wow. Uh, she play, she's played two games so far with that, and you know they're all hurting. But anyway. Well, they need a rest. Last night, if if you were going to rest a game, I guess last night would have been the one to There do you it. go. So, we'll take, right, let's a take a break. And we'll be back with uh, Coach Hunt right here on YourPrimetimeSports.com. Your favorite teams play on YourPrimetimeSports.com. Talking baseball. Klazuski, Campanella, talking baseball. The man and Bobby Fella, the scooter, the barber, and the nuke. They know like them it. all from Boston to Dubuque. Especially Willie, Mickey, and the Duke. All right, welcome back to YourPrimetimeSports.com here at Batten's Donuts. That was created this morning just for Coach Bruce Hunt, the head coach of Green County Tech Golden Eagles. So, good morning, Coach. Good morning. Good morning, Coach. Good to have you. Uh, Thank you. Let's talk. Let's do some talking baseball, what we just heard. Um, upcoming season, Season. Uh, I guess we're kicking it off a week from tonight with the sports banquet. Is that correct? Yes. Uh-huh. Well, uh, next Saturday. uh will be meet the eagles this will be for both the baseball and softball teams um doors will open at 5 30 we'll have a uh silent auction and also uh raffle door prizes uh coach raffo from arkansas state university baseball coach will be speaking and also uh, one of the representatives for um, Arkansas State softball will be also speaking. I'm not sure if it's going to be one of their head coaches or one of their assistant coaches, but it'll be a night to come out. And um, our both our baseball and softball teams will be introduced, and you'll be uh, able to hear some good speakers from Arkansas State, and it ought to be a be a great night. And and so this is the second year to do this. Am I correct? This banquet? Yes. Uh huh. And and y'all pull the softball. The, the Lady Eagles softball program and the baseball program together, you have one big, nice banquet. Right. Uh, now, tell us, uh, how much are tickets again for the banquet? Uh, tickets are $10 for adults, and if under 12, it's $5. Um, we will have a, a meal at 6 o'clock, and that will be followed by uh, our speakers. Now, and I'm going to honestly tell everyone that's listening this morning, if you love baseball, you're a Green County Tech uh, a fan, you do not want to miss this banquet. I went last year. It was a lot of fun. Uh, they had um, they had some old sports memorabilia there for folks to, to look at and observe. We had uh, Rooster Thomas there, a former uh, pitcher, a college standout, and high school Green County Tech pick, uh, pitcher back in the 60s, I believe. Uh and then there was just a lot of um, uh, alumni there. The the room was was packed full. Uh, I think uh, uh, baseball and softball had a slideshow. Am I right with that, coach? Yes. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And and then they uh, they came up and talked about the upcoming season and their schedules. Silent auction went great. I, how much money did that raise last year? I, I think it uh, raised over two thousand dollars for our program and uh kim adams did a great job with that coordinating that right. and, and uh as you said there's a lot of you know great memorabilia there there was a lot of people that donated some some really nice things so if you have uh an interest in baseball memorabilia it's a be a good place because there'll be some interesting items there and and um you know some items that might be hard to, to find at other places well, and there was some really neat items last year, and and so it, it, if you like baseball and you're a collector and you want an opportunity to uh, try to outbid someone and pick up a, a neat autograph or a neat item, that's the place to do it next year. Now, tell us where the, is is that at the at the community center again? The new community center? No, it won't be at the community center. We're gonna have it at the at the new high school. The uh, new high school. Yeah, we'll eat in the cafeteria and then go into the the auditorium for the, for the speakers and and. Um, some different other different presentations 
Okay, well that's that's good. Now, for people that are not familiar with the new cafeteria, the new high school, uh, let's let them know that they have to park in the back of the high school, right? right. And they'll come. It's a pretty long walk uh, up the sidewalk on the side and come all the way to that door to come in the the front. Wait, well, it'll basically or will those back doors of the gym be open. Well, it won't be. Um, it will be the pass gate if you come into the gym a lot of people would will be f- kind of familiar how it'll be the same way they come okay. in to uh watch a basketball game so and you, you're kind of right there when you when you uh walk in where the pass gate is where the auditorium is and where the uh cafeteria sets up okay well i just want for some new ones that may show up that does not know that route i just wanted them to know so all right well let's talk uh let's talk about the baseball team uh the schedule uh some of the key places that you're going this year and uh some of your key players that are coming up and so uh let's talk about your leaders of the team your seniors this year okay um we have seven seven seniors and um you know first of all uh before I start with seniors I kind of like to just mention the guys that we've Kind of lost last year, and we're going to try to replace. And and um, last year we had a you know a solid shortstop and Tony Forehand, and um, had two conference pitchers that we've lost, and um, Alex Markham and Cody Batten, and uh, Devin Inman played second, and and um, lost a lot of offense from him, and some good defense out of Chase McCreelis. Um it was Our, those five, right? Yeah. So, well, we, uh, yeah, basically of what right. we're uh, trying to be able to replace um, with our seniors this year. Uh, these guys have, you know, d- did a good job so far of uh, getting our team uh, together and, and leading them. Um, you know, right now we really don't know where we're at as far as uh, you know what type of team we're going to have. Or some of the things that we're going to uh, that are question marks coming in is our, our pitching. We've lost both our conference pitchers, so we're not real sure about how our pitching is going to stack up. But uh, now, now you, I want to touch on something here. Usually, uh, because I've been around your program for a long time, usually you don't lose both conference pitchers in one year usually you have a a senior and a junior am i correct in saying well they it it normally works out like that uh you usually have a uh you know a conference pitcher or or a guy that's thrown a lot of conference innings and it's it's been a while since we've been in this position where we're trying to replace uh a big chunk of our um conference innings we we don't have a a guy coming back that's through a lot of conference innings uh, the only one that, um, you know, we have Seth Deering that had, you know, got some. Uh, and he's a bulldog. Yeah, he is. And he'll be, uh, you know, he's coming out of basketball normally. That's going to take him just a little while to get his arm and arm in shape. But, uh, you know, Cody and Alex, uh, the bulk of the conference innings. We had uh, Ryan Cup last year got us some important conference innings also. Uh, but not enough to say, you know, not enough to feel comfortable. But the the thing about it, too, is that these guys are coming back. with It's an opportunity for them. And uh, we've talked about the fact that, you know, we know that we've lost a lot of conference innings. And a lot of teams will be coming back in our conference. Uh, there's so-called, you know, the name guys like Tanner Ring from Batesville that's right. already signed with uh, Arkansas State and uh, – we don't have that, you know. Uh, we always have in the past that there'll be a, a a guy that we have coming back that usually the conference knows about. But I would say that none of these guys right now that we have coming back would be, you know, considered named guys in our conference. But hopefully, you know, our goal is by the end of the year they will be. And um, that's a little magic out of the coach Bruce Hunt. Well, sleeve. there won't be any magic for me. <laughs> but the thing thing about it is, is, is uh, you know. We talk about this, you know, this is the unknown, 
but uh, you know, hopefully, what we're trying to do is uh, now we're not, we're it's to the point where we're not worried about this being a, a weakness. We're trying to make this one of our strengths, and we're you know, hopefully, we'll come and and uh, you know, be able to put a good pitching staff together, and at the end of the year, we'll you know, be successful with it. Now, who uh, let's stay on pitching for a minute. Um, who handles your pitching? Do you do that yourself? Well, or does, yeah, it? most I mostly do it myself. Uh, I kind of handle the pitching, the catching, and uh, we, you know, on our staff. Um, Talk about your staff. Okay, yeah. Uh, Coach Carpenter, Coach Ryan Carpenter, he works with the outfielders. He does a good job with them. Uh, he also works our junior varsity program. And, and uh, well, we all, we all help out with the – the junior varsity guys right. when it comes down to uh, it coaching them in the games uh, coach carpenter does that and has done a good job and and uh has a probably a little over a 900 uh winning percentage with our junior varsity guys um that's pretty strong uh, yeah it is uh we've we've always taken pride in our junior varsity program because we a lot of programs i think will uh put more emphasis on their their varsity and what we try to do in a practice is that um, if a senior's getting, you know, if he's getting 10 reps and, you know, with the ground balls, that right. the, the freshman's going to get the same 10 reps. And, um, you know, we don't, uh, whether you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, you're going to get the same amount of reps normally in a, in a practice. Uh, Coach Brian Krug, uh, this is his second year. Second year uh, from Batesville. Um, played at Memphis State and Lions College. Uh, coached at Lions College. Um, he works with our infielders. Does a good job with them. Uh, he works, uh, and at times, too, he works our all our in, in individual work. He works with our pitchers and all their pick moves and things like that, and, and uh, which is helpful because at that time I'm normally working with the with the catcher. So, uh, and is he a true Batesville native, or did he just coach up there for a while? No, he's a true Batesville. That's yeah, why I he, yeah, he's Batesville native. yeah, he's Batesville. He's Batesville through and through. And there's something about those Batesville guys once they you know go through <laughs> the program and everything. That they're, they're uh, you know yeah, he's one of the the Batesville. Bates were proud of I him. remember I had the opportunity to go to uh, Myrtle Beach with y'all last year, and, and I roomed up with the coaches and uh, Coach Crew, Coach Carpenter, and, and Coach Crail, and we had a big time. And Carp gave him a lot of heck over that Batesville stuff. So yeah, but uh, now is is Orland coming back to help? Yeah, you? Orland Orland uh, does. You know, I I say that. Uh, I kind of probably misspoke a little bit when I say that you know I work with the pitchers as far as uh, Orland does does a lot with the pitchers and and um, when I'm working with the catcher solely, there's a lot of times when you know he's working with the pitchers solely and um, you know he does a good job with them and uh, if if a pitcher is is patient and listens, you know sometimes uh, they might see Orland as a you know, uh, too old to to know what he's talking about or something like that. But uh, you know, guys that have bought in, like a Jacob Giles, because you know, I give all the credit to Orland on making Jacob Giles a you know pitcher and being able to pitch right. in college. And and there's uh, there's other guys that have come through our program that um, you know, uh, and this is with all kids. Some of them some of them buy into what you're. Uh, you know, selling and and some don't. But if uh, you know, when these kids buy into what Orland's selling, uh, they've they've always been successful. It's well, not a doubt. And I want to touch on this that uh, any of and I don't know if we have any young people listening this morning. Most of them don't get out of bed this early, but we do have a lot of adults and a lot of parents that um, you know, any time that a young person has the opportunity to. Just pick an older person's brain on the game of baseball. Take that advantage, and you have someone with Orland Quail, uh, Orland Quail's, um, uh knowledge, and he's been around the game all of his life. He had family that pitched in the big leagues. He was a good one himself. 
you know, if I was a 16, 17-year-old pitcher on Green County Tech, when I'm not pitching, I would be over there next to him asking him a lot of questions. Yeah, that's – It's invaluable. That, yeah, it is. Uh, and he could teach you so much. It He is slow and methodical in his teaching. And sometimes uh, our guys, they they want it quick and they want a quick fix. And, well, that's and, the world we live in. Yeah. <laughs> and they, they, want it, they want that quick information and, and hey – here it is. This will, this solves that and go on, and uh, it's it's not that easy. That's and right. It, I agree. Take takes work. Sometimes the the pathway that uh, he tells them is is <laughs> it's no quick easy fix, and it's it, it will be work. And uh, sometimes they um, that's not what they're looking for. Well, we're gonna let's take a, about a two minute break. What do you say, my IT man over here? Two minute break. Everything, man. We're going to take a two-minute break, and we'll return uh, at Batten's Donuts with this morning with Coach Bruce Hunt, uh, head coach of the Green Cane Tech Golden Eagles, and we'll talk about his uh, roster players. So back in two minutes. Your favorite teams play on yourprimetimesports.com. All right. All right, welcome back. We got the – I forgot about the talking baseball, Grim. The man and Bobby Feller, the scooter, the barber, and the nuke. They knew them all from Boston to Dubuque, especially Willie, Mickey, and the Duke. All right, welcome back to uh, Batten's Donuts here with Double G Sports Talk Saturday. Graham inserted that talking baseball just for our program and Coach Bruce Hunt this morning, and I stepped on it by accident there, Coach. But uh, anyway, let's talk about that. We, we covered the uh, Meet the Eagles next Saturday night and the uh, banquet. Uh, let's talk about the Eagles themselves now. Okay. Um, what do we – there we go. How's that? Sounds good. There, there Sorry go. about that. That's all right. Um. Yeah, but for our this year's team, what I would say about them is um, one of the things we got is depth. Uh, I like um, the fact that we can play two and three deep at every position, uh, and that's a true two or three deep. I, you know, I feel good about that. Um, I know that you know we we're having a lot of competition that, for positions. Um, we've got a lot of interchangeable parts. We got some guys that are versatile that can play different positions, and I like the fact that um, you know I, I feel good about our one through eight. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of guys that are returning from from that area. Um, so, you know, as far as the, our defense offense uh, going in, uh, and, and you really never know how it all shapes up because right. you also have a, a a factor with our you have new bats this year and uh, they're a little bit similar to wooden bats, so you know the scores and things will uh, reflect that they already have in the college game and really don't know how it's going to go with the the high school game yet but there will be a little bit of factor because the the exit speed coming off the the bats gonna be a little different so uh you know it just kind of remains to be seen it's gonna be more probably more of a game of uh you better be good from the mound you better be good um defensively you better run the bases you better bunt you know do all the fundamentals really good because you probably can't wait around for you know a guy to hit the the three-run homer um, you know, you know our senior class has, has done a good job early. Uh, the thing about you know all these kids, they're uh, they're hard workers. They're they're great kids. The uh, and I know you know that's kind of coach speak and everything. But uh, you know if they if they aren't, uh, I probably wouldn't. I probably would just you know fly by that and not really mention it. But right. uh, you know their parents have done a an outstanding job with these these young men and they're they're a good group to work with i have been for the uh past two or three years and and um now you, you carry know. you carry usually five to seven 
I think I've seen as many as eight or nine before throughout the years uh, of senior leadership on a baseball club. How many do you, how many seniors do you have this year? We have seven seniors. Seven seniors. Seven, okay. seven seniors this year. Um, you know, for our overall staff, we uh, overall team will probably have uh, a little over thirty. Uh, normally, we have between uh, thirty and thirty-five, and, and sometimes uh, you know a little higher. Um, you know, with all these all these guys we have this year, um, you know, to this point, they've they've done a good job with uh, their their work ethic, and they've done a good job with. Uh, you know, you don't like to have a, a worry about, um, you know, discipline problems and things like that. Right. You want to, you know, the main thing you want to do is, is coach baseball and, and uh, not be a, a – For that you know, to be a distraction. Oh, yeah, it can be. And, and these guys have done a real good job with uh, putting the, the baseball first. Um, what we're trying to do, you know, now and what's important is um, we've got guys that – play um three different teams in legion we've got guys that play in the summer uh play with different teams in the summer um so right now you know we're trying to get them all coming together and playing for for green county tech now how many uh let me interrupt you there how many do you have i know we mentioned seth daring a minute ago uh i guess uh Andrew Ferguson would be Andrew the other. Ferguson. Just those two on the ba- on the no, basketball program. No, Nathan Ferguson. Nathan Ferguson. Nathan there you go. Real key yeah. too, because Nathan, uh, we're looking for him to have a, a big year for us. Okay. Those are those are three, um, you know, impact guys uh, for us. And and uh, there's also been a couple other basketball players that have expressed you know interest in, in coming out too that uh, could could possibly help us that Good. have played in the past. Yeah. That, that um. You know, we until they're out, we'll we won't we won't mention yeah, them right. yet until they actually want to want to come out. But uh, we we're looking forward to see it, seeing them if they're if they have the interest. Well, we're gonna we're gonna extend your time just a little bit, probably another five minutes, and then we have our next next guest coming on. But let's uh, let's go over the schedule real quick here. Uh, it looks like you're going back to Myrtle Beach this year on March the nineteenth through. Um, I guess these are the game times, yeah, March game time. 19th through the 22nd. Fun trip. Uh, a lot of parents go, family members, they make a vacation out of it. I had the opportunity to go to Myrtle Beach last year. Uh, it wasn't no vacation for me, though. We were broadcasting and, and taking pictures, and I was working the whole time, but it was it was a great experience. So uh, pretty much the same routine as last year at the Cal Ripken Complex, I'm sure. Is that right, yes, Coach? Yes. Uh-huh. And then um, – uh, the, the, your your first month of March. I mean, you kick off the season on February the twenty eighth with Brooklyn at home, and and that's usually about the same every year. But you are loaded in March. Uh, let's just go over some of these teams that you guys better be ready to play. Yeah, Jonesboro, Marion, Valley View, Fort Smith Southside, Nettleton, and BB, and that's all before you go to Myrtle Beach. Right. Uh. Yeah. There's a we. Every year, what we try to do is get the you know the best possible um, schedule we can we think we can handle, and we try to get a schedule you know the upper end of the teams that you know we feel like we can compete with, and uh, it, it's what we do is uh, in which you know a lot of programs do. They're trying to play teams and get them ready for for their conference, and and um, you know we start off. Our conference play with BB and and win that will both be a challenge and you know the whole every every team in our conference is always um, you know you can't take a take a a Tuesday off in our conference so you know hopefully with our non conference schedule what we're trying to do is um, get us ready for um, our conference schedule and we're not um, worried that we're going to uh, be a 20 and zero team or anything like that that'd be nice but uh we want to be there at the end you know whatever our record is is uh you know overall record is not as important to us as what what's our what's our conference record and do we qualify for the state playoffs and do we have a type of team that takes to you know to to go deep into the state playoffs 
I'll let you know I, I'm a, I, we're I running what five years now. I'm just about ready to hang a big old poster up on the wall again. Yeah, well, <laughs> we we are too. You know, we and I talked with our kids the other day about about this part of the season. We don't we don't go in and and say, you know, our whole viewpoint isn't to win a state championship. And our, I know that for a our fact. Our whole viewpoint is we're going to try to be the best team that we can be. And um, you know, a lot of teams will throw out. Well, you know, every team that's from 1A to 7A wants to win a state championship, and that's probably their goal. Right. And, uh, you know, but only one of them is going to do that. So at the end of the year, do you say, okay, we're a failure? And how you, you got to have some type of game plan if you're going to win a state championship and, and uh, instead of just throwing it out there, hey, we're going to win a state championship and then don't have, you know, things set in place to try to do that. And, you know, the first thing we're going to try to do is be the best team that, that we can be and that might sound, you know, my, the understanding behind that is that, you know, some years our team, the best they can do might be fourth place in the conference. Right. Or the best, you know, we may be good enough to win a conference championship. And if we finish third, that's not, you know, what we wanted to do. And that that's, you know, that's kind of our first goal. And then we, we kind of break it down too is, you know, what, you know, we don't talk about really about, you know, beating this, this team or that team in non-conference, but, BB is our first conference game, and we'll we'll start talking about you know we're going to try to win the first inning of of the BB game, and then you know try to after that just you know try to knock them out and keep you know keep plugging it with uh, you know with our conference games and. Well, and I know for a fact that you what you say you guys do, and uh, I know you never go into the game of baseball at the beginning of a new season with this mission to win this state tournament it's always your goals to play and get better uh and i'll i'll tell you a comment that i made last night and i think it fit, fits in every realm of of sports is you know everyone wants to get to the championship or to the conference championship you want to be that one through four seed uh, in your conference well to do that you have to have a lot of luck and you have to uh play good quality baseball and, and, and stay focused. Well, to win that state championship, to win that thing outright, you have to have a whole lot of luck and remain injury free and stay stay in a in a in a a way that, you know, your key players are, are there to, to uh to stay in the lineup. Right. right. And and your pitching staff. So there there's a lot that, that plays into getting there and winning that thing overall and um but I, I made that comment. I'm ready to hang up a picture. I, I know th- they're tough to come by, but uh, Green County Tech has a rich, rich history of baseball. Uh, coach Bruce Hunt has done has been the head coach for many years. How, what year is this coming up? This is my 27th overall. Uh, he don't 20, look barely 20, over 27. Does yeah, he? I know. <laughs> there there yeah, you go. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. I'm just. I'd rather. Hey, Cliff, I'd rather just buy me a couple of donuts. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Well, let me ask you a question. Will you come back and see us? Yes, sir. Okay, yeah. good. Well, we're we're rooting for you, and and we'll I'll be texting you here in a week or so. I'll be at the banquet next Saturday night. I'm looking okay. forward to that. Yeah, that'll be a great uh, night. I, I'll tell you something uh, when we get off the air here in a minute. But we're going to take us, what, a three-minute commercial break, and we have a young lady, a Green County Tech alumni, who is an IFBB pro. Monica Specking is going to be our next guest, and she's going to talk to us about uh, health issues and working out and how she looks the way she looks. And uh, Grimm's got a picture posted of her up on there. So um, uh, if you don't know who she is, so return in three minutes and we'll talk some bodybuilding at yourprimetimesports.com here at Batten's Donuts. Your favorite teams play on yourprimetimesports.com. All right, welcome back to WG Sports Talk Saturday here at Batten's Donuts. Uh, before I touch on our next guest, I, I, for, I forgot, just as all get out, Daryl Brokemichael wanted us to mention 
that sign-ups, uh, Perigo Youth Baseball sign-ups, are again today at the new community center. And I'm sure they probably start around 9 or 10 o'clock. So uh, if you don't know, and, and I don't have all the details in front of me, you can call out the new community center and uh, get your child signed up to uh, play in Perigo Youth Baseball. Now, our next guest is Monica Specking. She is a Green County Tech uh, alumni. Uh, what year was it you graduated, young lady? Uh, 2003. 2003. See, I had you at 2004 or five or so. Uh-huh. I knew my son graduated in 05. So, but she played softball there. Um, yes. I remember taking her pictures from the softball team. Uh, what What else did you do at Green County Tech? I uh, played basketball, ran track, um, softball, of course. Uh, a little bit of everything. <laughs> well, we're happy to have you this morning. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So uh, we had been working on this, I guess, all the way back to October, hadn't we? Yes. Trying to get our schedules together. Uh-huh. So tell us a little bit about um, what uh, caused you to get into the bodybuilding form of, of, uh, of uh Okay. For uh, First, to explain what the IFBB is, okay. um, the organization I'm I'm in um, is the International Federation of Bodybuilding and Fitness, and there's uh, different divisions. There's the men and women's bodybuilding, fitness, figure, bikini, and there's a new division for the men and women's physique. I do the figure. Okay, so it's not what most people would think of as a typical bodybuilder. That's not me. Um, figure, there's different criteria they look for. We pose differently. Um, they look for symmetry and proportion, definition. Uh, we we don't pose like the bodybuilders, you know. We don't go out there with the front double bicep and all that. Right. We, we have a front side back pose, model pose. Um, you know, uh, fitness, they do the gymnastics routines. Mm-hmm. So we don't do that. Ours is just a physique competition. Um, and then you have the bikini, which is more like the swimsuit model look. Um, and then the men and women's physique, the new um, the new division. Uh, women's physique uh, is you know, a little bit bigger, harder than figure. Um, a lot of people think it's going to take the place of women's bodybuilding, that that sport is kind of dying out. The women's bodybuilding The women's is? bodybuilding, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, I can honestly tell you that I like what you do and, and your counterparts uh-huh. more than what you just said might be yes. dying out. Yes, I agree. I have... I have uh, Which I have a lot of respect for the women's oh, bodybuilders because it, it's a lot of hard work and dedication, you know, they put their bodies through, but that's just not my Yeah, and, and, and to me, I think uh, I've seen some of them that are way too buck, bulked up, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, can't, you know, and so anyway, well, but yeah, I, when like I first what you do. Yeah, when I first started, um, well, of course, nobody around here knew anything about what figure was, and like, I was still, you know, researching and um you know there there was only maybe like two pros in arkansas and so people automatically assumed oh you want to do bodybuilding you want to get that big and like you know and they really knew nothing about it um until recently you know um they've seen my success and what what i've accomplished and they realize okay um the difference in the divisions right. now do you do you live right here in Paragol still yes, or in, I this, currently in this area uh-huh. Yeah, so so when you travel, you just travel from here. You wherever mm-hmm. you have to go. Tell us, tell our listeners, um, where where some of the well, tell us the places that you go. Have you been out okay. of the country? Um, not yet. Not yet. Okay. But they do have competitions overseas. Um, okay. Well, um, when I first started competing, it was back in two thousand eight. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Um, you know, you start with a state show. Okay, if you win a state show, you qualify to do a national show, and then win a national show, then um, if you win your class in a national show, certain ones, um, you get that's how you get your pro card. So, in 2008, I went to the Arkansas State Championships in Little Rock. That was my very first show ever, and I trained myself. You know, I did research on my own, I dieted myself, trained myself, and I ended up winning the overall in my very first show. I bet that made you feel good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, again, a um, couple weeks later, I did the uh, Northwest Arkansas Classic in Fayetteville and won the overall there, too. So I was, like, hooked, you know. So then um, I was like, okay, what's my next step going to be? And Monica Brandt, she's, like, one of the biggest fitness icons in the world. She was having a um, fitness camp in Austin. 
So that following year, um, in 2009, February, I went to her camp, and that's where I met my current um, coach, trainer, uh, Kim Odo, who is out of Temecula, California, and he works with all the top pro athletes, pro, pro figure and bikini and all that. So um, he's the one that transformed me into a figure physique. He said I was going towards the bodybuilding because how heavy I was training and how just hard I was training. So he transformed me into a figure physique and then we started, you know, we did my first national show that year and I actually got fourth in my first national Where show. Where was it at? It was in Chicago. Okay. Junior Nationals in Chicago. So now do you have, besides, what would you say his name? Kim, Kim Odo. Kim Odo. Mm-hmm. Besides Kim Odo, uh, your your personal trainer, um, do you have, uh, by the, by having the three-letter word behind your name, pro, do you have an agent? Do okay. You have any I have a manager. A manager. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll get to that. Um, it's a fitness management group. It's the it's under J.M. Mannion. Okay. And so as an amateur, I'm thinking, you know, all the girls want to get with J.M. Mannion. So that was my ultimate goal um, to get, you know, manage my hip. So first of all, so I've been training since 2008, you know, to get my pro card. Right. Okay. And uh, so I did my first national show 2009 you know i competed that year in a couple shows i mean it's really expensive mm-hmm. to compete so i couldn't do as many as i wanted to but um long story short the next year 2010 that's when i actually got my pro card 2010. okay so kind of interesting um my very first show that year i started with a state show in louisiana and i didn't even place so that kind of got my hopes down but about um, a few months later, I did another national show, the USA is in Vegas, and I got sixth in my class. And okay, let me explain the different um, divisions or, diff- or different classes. Okay. okay, at a national state show, national show, you go by height for figure. Mm-hmm. So there could be six height classes, you know, A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay. Okay. So I'm, I was usually a C class girl. I'm five three and a half. So. Um, you know, uh, if you win your class, okay, so there's probably like 30 to 50 girls in each class. You can imagine how big the show is, depending on how many enter. If you win your class, then you go against everyone that won their class and for the overall. At the, at the end. At the end. Yes. Okay, so I got that show, I got six of my class. And I was really just discouraged after that. Like, I felt like I... Um, what had happened was I got called out for top five at the prejudging, the final show. They didn't call me back out there. I ended up getting six. So I was really down on myself. And again, long story short, um, I thought about just taking a break from competing. And but something inside of me told me to keep going. Eight weeks later was um, Nationals in Atlanta. And I want, that's where I won the overall and you know, beat out hundreds of girls and got the overall and got my pro card. So I, I, I've heard you mention twice already about you kind of get down if you, you know because your first mm-hmm. two, your first two experiences in 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 the um, in what you do, you you mm-hmm. want them and you taught yourself oh, yeah. and, 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 <laughs> and all of that. So uh, is it can it be somewhat of a of a? And I have another question I want to ask here. Mm-hmm. Can it be somewhat of a roller coaster ride? An oh, emotional that, roller? you know, it's funny you say that. I, that's how I explain it all the time to um you know girls that are interested in competing or just you know my clients in general like it definitely is a roller coaster of emotions and well uh and you know and i can see that but you know the only encouraging thing that i can say to you is you know when you hit that that wall sometimes like okay i just don't want to do this tomorrow i should have won that or whatever your the case may be don't give up because you have so much you uh, know sometimes we we hit that rut but uh you know, you just got to keep plugging. And I, I, I told this the other day. If you're an athlete, I'm 52 years old, and I carry this with me all the time. If you're an athlete, an ex-athlete, you still have that burning desire mm-hmm. to win. You still have that competitiveness in you. Yeah. I have that in my business today. Uh-huh. I had that competitiveness in the photography. I have it in what we're doing now. Uh, 
and I, I don't want to be last. I want to be, I want to know, I want people you to know. You won't settle I, for, that's right, you know. That's right. That's right. That's how I am. <laughs> and, and so keep, keep that, keep that focus, you know. Mm-hmm. Here's the next question I want to ask you. What was your body like before you started training? And, and tell us oh. about your dieting. Okay. Um, well, I had an athletic body. You know, I played, like I said, I played sports my whole life. Um, but I carried a lot more body fat because I knew very little about nutrition. So once I started, you know, researching like what bodybuilding figure was and uh, researching the diets, I learned how to eat clean, okay? So I started eating like five or six meals a day, three hours apart, you know, religiously every day. And I, you know, I, I saw the results I was getting because you can train your butt off like every day. But if you don't eat right, you will not transform your physique. I seen that on TV not too long ago. You, you can... Uh you can work hard and, 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 and do all these things, but if you do not eat properly and eat the right things, you're really not burning those calories. You're really not getting rid of that body fat. Uh, it, it's uh, You have to put all that together. I believe uh, nutrition is 80% of your results okay. when competing. Like, you know, I say 10% training, 10% genetics, 80% dieting. All right, so I, I, I'm over the 50-year plateau. Uh, starting for the first time in my life, mm-hmm. starting to get a little belly. Okay. And it bothers me. And uh, But I'm, I'm always on the go. I'm going to ball games every night. We're broadcasting. I'm taking pictures. You know, we get in at midnight last night. I'm back up at 6 this morning. We have this show. So I'm always on the move. Uh, no excuse. I, I, yeah. I, I, know, I know. I know you're fixing to get on to me. Uh, and uh, so what do I need to do as far as... Not eating on the run, not eating, uh, driving down the highway, eating the fast food mm-hmm. stuff. What do I need to do to, because of my age, to do better? Age doesn't matter. Okay. I, well, I know that, but what I'm saying is heart disease runs in my family. Okay. Uh, and so I need to be a little more cautious about what I'm putting into my body, mm-hmm. uh, not clogging up arteries and those type of things. So what do I need to do to eat a little better, a little healthier? Okay, and try to work more out with it too. Knowledgeable um, with the nutrition. You know, my diet consists of lean proteins, uh, healthy fats, complex carbs. Okay, and eating clean means, you know, no processed junk. You know, it's just clean, natural, whole food. Um, you know, is that organic? You, not not necessarily, not necessarily organic. organic. Yeah. Okay. So you need to prepare ahead of time. Like I take. You know, one day out of the week, sometimes when I have some downtime, and I'll prepare my meals um, for a few days ahead. Okay, so you can just grab and go. Right. So you stock your fridge with, you know, healthy options so you're not grabbing, you know, junk. And you, you eat know, a I lot pack, of fruit? No. Okay. Um, in the off-season, yes. Now, um, competition diet, you know, fruits are nothing but just carbs and sugar, Okay. actually. So uh, we cut out dairy. We cut out fruits. Um, you know, any kind of processed food like that. So... I mean, I have um, to give up my cheese. You don't have to. It was, <laughs> <laughs> moderation is the key. <laughs> okay, moderate. Okay. Yeah. So um, usually, when I tell my clients, what, you know, you don't want to uh, quit cold turkey or anything. Okay. So what I say is, you know, pick two meals out of the week, not a whole day, but just pick one meal or two meals out of the week. Maybe it's Sunday morning breakfast and okay. Wednesday night dinner, and eat whatever you want. Okay, for that one meal. The rest of the time during the week, eat clean and eat healthy. Okay? Stay, so that, stay disciplined. Yes, yeah, so that way, you know, you keep your sanity a little bit. You know, you're getting that the meal, whatever you want, later on in the week. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the Monica advice, and uh, you're going to have to post and send me some things, okay? Oh, keep, yeah, keep, for me, sure. keep me on track. I'd be so, happy to help. All right, so now how do you keep yourself motivated? And, and speaking on track, uh, keep yourself on track and... and, and the grueling diet, yes. you know, of the everyday thing. So how do you keep that motivation? Okay, I think of the bigger picture. I picture myself, okay, in 12 weeks, you know, I'm going to actually act today. Um, I will be on stage 12 weeks from today. So I'm thinking, okay, in 12 weeks, you know, I'm going to be on stage. i got to present my best physique. Like, you know, you've worked this hard so far. You don't want to just give up now. you just got to keep pushing on. Right. And also all the the people that I've noticed that, you know, kind of look up to me and they're motivated by my success and like what I've accomplished and, and so I can't let them down. You know, I want to just be my best at all times and, you know, it just keeps, keeps me pushing, keeps me going. Do you have a, uh, 
Okay, we need my my man over here saying we need to take a break. I'm really getting into this, <laughs> so I quit looking at my watch. All right, we're going to take a two two minute break, and we'll return back to Batons Donuts with Double G Sports Talk sh- uh, Show, uh, talking to Monica about uh, IFBB Pro. So we'll return in two minutes. Your favorite teams play on yourprimetimesports.com. All right, welcome back to Double G Sports Talk Saturday here at Batten's Donuts. Monica didn't know I'd already turned the microphones <laughs> on so we could be raring to go. Well, we were dancing. That's I was like, right. I wish yeah, we did have a camera to, to see how much so, fun we're having. <laughs> Coach Bowling's over here. He's wanting pictures, and I'm wanting pictures. And listen, we, you guys may not realize it out here, but we have someone in our midst from our own community that is a professional, and she works hard at it. And she's going. We're going to see her in big time magazines one day. So just just stay in touch because we we have we're the first in this area to have her on the air. I, I can I can. Nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, let me ask you a question. Then I'm going to turn it over to the a grim man over here. He he's got some questions for you. Uh, do you get? I guess what I'm wanting to ask you. Do you uh, and. And I'm asking you this because it really upsets my apple cart when men do this. I think it's disrespectful and rude when people whistle at women walking down the sidewalk or through mm-hmm. a mall or whatever. And we've already had that happen <laughs> this morning here in Batten's Donuts. I, I, uh, and you kind of brushed it off and handled it uh, professionally. Mm-hmm. Um, you. Do you get a lot more attention now that you're in you're in physical tip-top condition and body shape? Yeah. Do you get... You yes. Yes, of course. Um, I really I don't pay attention to that. You know, especially like in the gym, like, um, you know, I'm in my own zone. I'm in my own mind frame. I pretend like nobody else is in the gym around me when I'm working out. You know, I'm in there to do my thing, work hard, um, and then get in and get out. I don't socialize right. at the gym. And now, you know, my friends and people know that when I'm in, which is what in the off season, you'll have a little more fun and, you know, I'll I'll socialize a little bit, but you know, when, right now I'm in competition mode. But um, yeah, I don't really pay attention to that. Um, but another aspect, um, you know, getting attention. Uh, let's just say, um, for example, um, not too long ago, I got a message on Facebook from a woman. I I don't even know. She's from California or somewhere, and she expressed to me that uh, she is, you know, training for her first competition this year, and she printed off my picture and put it on her wall. (laughs) And I started crying when I read that, because I remember when I first started, you know, I had women, pro figure and fitness women that I looked up to in the magazines, and, you know, I aspired to look like them and be like them, and just knowing that she felt that way about me, it just made me just really... I don't know, I don't have words. Like, I just, I love that I can share my passion and um, inspire other women. Well, and I know where you're going there. Not that I've ever, everything that has to do with what I've done in life is locally. I mean, we're not talking about someone from California. And by the way, my nephew just texted me, Tyler Garment, uh-huh. and said, I'm listening to Monica, so he's, <laughs> hey, a, body, he's a bodybuilder. <laughs> yeah, say hi, Tyler. But anyway, uh, you know, I started in the photography business 14 15 years ago mm-hmm. and i started out shooting sports action and doing team sports and that's how i remember you, you. Yeah, <laughs> that's how you and i met years ago and uh i know that there's been several young people that have come have uh, approached me over the years and and said you know mr clifton i'd like to do what you're doing and mm-hmm. and i know that they're doing that now and i've i've had that inspiration of giving them that yeah say yeah go out and do this and love it and enjoy it and be you know be around people so it it does it makes your heart swell you know when someone uh does things like that and that's Mm -hmm. why i brought that up but i'm going to turn this over uh to dave he's got a few questions for you and then he'll turn it back over to me and and we're going to keep talking uh bodybuilding here you go dave i finally get a turn on the i haven't been on since we started the show my gosh Clifton's a microphone hog over here. <laughs> How are you? I'm great. I have a, a couple of uh, key pertinent questions about, I mean, this is Paragould. This is a small town. This is mm-hmm. small town USA. How does somebody from Paragould get a pro card and get on the pro uh, bodybuilding circuit? Well, I had a dream, 
and I set out to do it, and I did it. <laughs> well, how did you? So, how did you get your well? Card? Um, okay. Uh, well, you know, I mentioned I won the overall at nationals in Atlanta. This was uh, <laughs> 2010 in October. Okay. Um, so after I won overall, like I did my very first pro show week late, uh, the next weekend later, in Houston, and that's where I got third place. You know, top three, you get qualified for the Olympia. That was my dream. You know, that's the most prestigious show in the world Olympia, for what we do. that's the one that you were talking about that's in, in Las Vegas. Las Vegas, yes, right. every year. And um, that's like my greatest accomplishment. So that's then, your you know. ultimate goal then is to make it to the Olympia and, and compete well, there. The ultimate goal would be to be Miss Olympia, be uh, Miss, you know, figure Olympia, the best figure competitor in the world for what we do. Um, now, when I heard you say Olympia a while ago, I misheard you mm -hmm. and thought you said Olympics. Olympics, no. <laughs> now, now, there's not a bodybuilding sp uh, uh, sport in the Olympics. Not no. Olympics. There, there's this weightlifting, but Yeah, not. this is our Olympics. <laughs> this is so the Olympia is yes. the Olympics for your sport. Yes. And and you haven't made it to that yes, yet. Yes, I have. So my first pro show, oh, I qualified, qualified and I did my first Olympia in this, you know, 2011. September, I got the jacket on right now. Oh, you're wearing <laughs> it. Okay. Yeah, and um, I mean, it's like the top 30 girls in the world. and um, So you, you know, were in the top 30 just by making it to the yeah. Olympia. So how they're doing it now, okay, first, uh, it used to be the top three that win a pro show get qualified for the Olympia. Well, they changed the rules. And made it a little harder now because uh, it's becoming so much more popular and more divisions and that more you have to in it now win a pro show now to qualify. Wow. So what I did. Did you do that? Did you win Well, that? this is what happened. Okay. So I qualified, you know, went to the Olympia and, you know, I got like 16th. At, they only give top, you know, cash prizes and prizes to the top six. And then they only go to top 15, and then everybody after that is a 16. But, you know, this is my first Olympia. I was just, I'm a rookie. I was happy to be there and be a part of it and actually step on stage with the women I've admired for years. Well, I went ahead. I was, that was going to be my last show of the year. But um, since they were changing the rules for next year, I was going to try to do, to qualify um, by going to Fort Lauderdale. And it was October 8th of 2011. And... I competed in Fort Lauderdale, and you had to win top three. I got fourth place. Oh, no. <laughs> I was, like, crushed. You know, I was, like, okay, points so away from qualifying for this year. In that situation, year. if one of the top three who are going to now move on to Olympia uh -huh. gets hit by a bus, no, that doesn't you don't matter get to move because up? Because there's so many other shows. But now, this year, my goal is to win my first pro show so I can go to the Olympia this year. And my... Uh, my first show will be May 11th at the Optimum Classic uh, Pro Figure in Shreveport, Louisiana. Okay, that's not that far away. You know, and then a week later, I'm going to go ahead and do um, the New York Pro, um, May 19th. So, depending on how I do in those two shows, will determine well, what my next step you is. You've got to get around to all these shows. Do you have sponsors like 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 a race car or or a um, golf or or currently at the moment i do not um oh well we got a shout out for sponsors well, yeah. yeah i do uh, well anytime fitness uh last year they did help me out a little bit you know but as far as like but corporate sponsors like nike sponsors tiger woods yeah. or something like that did or do those even exist it's, in the Yeah, uh, it's in, in the, the works. Yeah. I'm actually, um, two weeks from today, I'll be going to the Arnold Classic, which is like the second most prestigious show in the world for what we do. Um, it's the Arnold Classic Sports Festival. So it's not just, you know, the bodybuilding figure, fitness. It's like all kinds of sports, like anything from fencing, gymnastics, strongman competitions. So I'm actually going to work a booth because it's a big expo. So I'm working a booth for Muscle Nutrition. And they're a supplement company um, that actually a great friend of mine, she's sponsored by them. And so I'm hoping that this will give an opportunity to maybe for them to p pick me up or, you know, someone else there, you know, get my name out and um, possibly. Well, get the sponsored. best way to do that, obviously, is to win an event. Yeah. That gets you attention by the sponsors. Obviously, mm -hmm. you know this already. So let's talk about those events one more time. You're going to Shreveport in May 11th. May. And then immediately following that, or very shortly yeah. following that, you're going to New, New York, York Pro. in... That's the very next weekend. Oh, the May very next. 19th. Both of them are in May. Yeah. Wow, busy. That's going to be a busy so couple of weeks. So in 12 weeks, you, yeah. I'll be on stage. Be praying for me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Now, do you have a website where people can go 
well, you and follow my, along. I have a, a fan page on Facebook. Um, so you can just, you know, type in Monica Specking IFBB Figure Pro and like me. If they type in Monica Specking, they're going to oh, find yeah. you. Oh, we'll yeah. That's S-P-E-C-K-I-N-G. And we'll post a link to okay. your Facebook page on our Facebook page. And then uh, we definitely want to have her back, right, Clifton? We're going to have yeah. her back uh, to talk. You know what? For sure, after May, you know, when you've gone to the competition, mm-hmm. you've gone up there and you've kicked everybody's butt. Yes. And That's you come plan. back here. And you qualified for Olympia at that point by winning uh-huh. at least one of those. Yeah. We're going to want to have you back okay. before you go to Vegas. Do you got anything you want to add before we get out here? Oh, Clifton wants to come back. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Here we go. All right. Uh, I'm back on here. We're go- Let's talk about uh, just a couple of things real quick before okay. we get over here. We have Coach Bolin sitting over in the wings, and he'll, I guarantee you with no problem he'll take up the rest <laughs> of the time. Uh, you brought some some eight by tens and looks yes. like some maybe some five by sevens over there. Mm-hmm. Some uh, these professionally well done pictures of you. Uh, yes. If uh, if you would like an autograph of Monica, uh, please send a Facebook message to me. I think we have a couple of pictures posted of her and. and uh, on your primetimesports.com, go to our Facebook page and send send me a, a a message. Send Dave a message. I'll be sure and get that picture for you. If you are nearby Battens this morning, she probably will be here another. I would say 15 minutes or so. Mm-hmm. Uh, stop in and and uh, ask for one. Uh, your primetime sports is taking care of all that. I'm definitely getting me one, <laughs> and she has some really good pictures. So. Now, I know Dave asked you um, uh, about coming back, and we do want you to come okay. back. We want you I'm to, happy you know, to uh, to come, come back. back. We want to keep supporting you. We want to keep promoting you as much as possible. And I do know that um, we're, we are sitting here right now next to a workout place. Uh, what's, uh, <laughs> anytime yeah, Fitness. Anytime Fitness. I couldn't think of I couldn't think of uh, Grant's name for a split second. I actually worked there. You um, do? A couple, well, I work full-time at the Health and Wellness Institute at St. Bernard's. Okay. Um, and I also uh, train uh, people three days a week in the mornings um, at in, any time. In, right next door. Yep. Okay. So well, if you, cool. yeah, if you're needing a trainer or need some advice, just um. Well, that's what I was fixing to touch on before we, before we got off there. Do you work with people and train people? And, yes. Uh, I mean... You know, and I know you don't do it's that truly for free, my passion. so yes. Yes, I love um, personal training, you know, and I, I get into the nutrition aspect, too. Like, that's something I'm really passionate about, and um, I want to further my education and get my registered dietitian degree in the future. Um, but uh, also, I just, you know, I've started to train girls that are interested in competing. So I'm helping two friends of mine um that are competing once in figure and once in fitness, and they're having their first uh, competition March 31st at the Ronnie Coleman Classic in um, Dallas. Okay. So I'm um, helping them prepare for that. So if anyone is interested in competing in the bikini fitness figure, I'd be more than happy to help you because that's my passion. And well, you uh, and if you don't know how to get in touch with Monica, we won't pass. We will not pass out any phone numbers or anything like that. But you can contact her from her personal Facebook page, Monica Specking. We have a link on yourprimetimesports.com that you can locate her that we will keep on our page 24-7. So it's not going to be hard to find this young lady, and it's her passion, and she wants to work with other folks. So I have one question that I have okay. to ask. I have been to Little Rock to my nephew's body. I'm true bodybuilding. This is not stuff. These are big uh-huh. guys. Okay. <laughs> What is the brown stuff everybody puts all over their skin? That's, I see them walking down the hallway. <laughs> you know, they're walking down the hallway. And the airbrush not, tan. Huh? The, the airbrush tan. Is that what it is? Yeah. They airbrush them? Yeah. They, you have to be really dark under the stage a lot. So up in to person, up it looks the, really, really dark. But um, on stage, you can't be too dark. Is that is that know? to cause the muscles in the in the, in the, in the um, uh, what am I trying to think the of definition. here? The definition. Yes. yes. Thank you very much. The uh-huh. definition to pop. Exactly. Okay. And under the stage lights, if you did not have that color on, you would just be drowned out. It just wouldn't look good. So. Thank you for answering my mm-hmm. question. <laughs> no problem. 
I, I don't. All right, so we're going to return in a couple of minutes after a commercial break. Thank you so much, Monica, for Thank visiting you. with us today. We will definitely have you back on, and we will stay in touch with you. Hope you will stay in touch with us. So yes. we'll return in two minutes at Batten's Donuts with Double G Sports Talk Saturday. Your favorite teams play on yourprimetimesports.com. Welcome back to YourPrimetimeSports.com. It's Double G Sports Talk Saturday. We've had a uh, full morning so far, and we're going to finish up with the uh, person we normally start the show with, and that's uh, Green County Tech head basketball coach, head boys basketball coach, Scott Bolin. And uh, I bet he's happy to be here this morning after a, a huge win in Batesville last night right here on YourPrimetimeSports.com. Yes, it was a, a big win for us because it uh, it put us into the playoffs for the seventh time out of nine years. And, uh uh, you know, it was, um, you know, it was just one of those uh, games that you have to go in and take care of your business. And, uh, you know, uh, all you want to do is win at this point. It uh, don't matter how you do it, good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. You just got to win and survive in advance. We went over that this morning before you got here. Who all has clinched playoff spots? There are three of the four boys teams that have yeah. clinched cl- playoff spots. You are one of them, BB and Forest City. Right. Now, the seeds are not set yet. You guys could still end up as high as a number two seed. We could. I mean, you know, there's a lot of scenarios that um, have to take place. But uh, the worst that we can do is third place. So, you know. You, okay, so you can't fall to fourth place. No, we can't fall to fourth. Okay. And Forest City, is are, they're not, they don't have a lock on the one yet. Uh, they don't. No, they need to win one more game of it, actually. And and uh, if they win one more game, they've got a lock on the number one. Yes. And then that pretty much, if they win one more, that also locks you into the number three. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Yeah. All right. So we got that figured out. Now, let's look at the two games that you've got coming up in the final week of the regular season. And that is uh, Blyville, which will be on yourprimetimesports.com on Tuesday night. And then your final home game of the season, Thursday night, against win. the win, uh, win Yellow Jackets. Right. Of those two, well, I mean, you don't have to win either one of them. You're in the playoffs, but obviously you want to win them. Um, which one of those two do you think obviously is is going to give you the most, uh, the most problems? Well, I think probably both of them are going to give us problems because, first of all, um, you know, uh, we never know who's going to show up offensively for us. Um, you know, defensively has been about the, the, the most consistent thing that we've uh, had, uh, especially the second half. But I think the thing that, that we've got to really focus on, and it's just something that, uh, you you know, once you get into the playoffs, then you have to prepare your team uh, physically and mentally, and in my opinion, more mentally at this point, to, to make a run, you know. And how you do that is, is you get a run, you, get, you make a run right here, uh, you start playing well in the last two or three games of your conference season. And uh, last night, uh, even though baseball is um, not a really uh, strong basketball team, I mean, you know, they're, they're capable and they've played some people that are pretty tight. Uh, we shot the ball offensively in the second half uh, the way we need to shoot it. Uh, you know, we have. Uh, you know, we don't like I said. We don't have everybody that we know that's going to come in and and give us some uh, some baskets. And uh, you know, last night uh, Andrew Hovis. Uh, oh my God! He really shot it well in the second half. Well, he came out at halftime after the first half was over, and it was kind of a close game. Right. And he started to shoot around, and he didn't shoot any shots in the shoot around except from behind the three point line. He didn't shoot anything right. inside, and I did not see him miss. I said I told Clifton at the time. Andrew's about to be on fire. Uh-huh. And sure enough, as the second half started, he came out and lit it up. He did not miss a three-pointer the entire second well, half. Well, you know, we feel like we have the best uh, two three-point shooters uh, in the league. And, uh, you know, in, in a game of horse, we'd uh, definitely put them up against anybody with uh, Andrew and uh, uh, Tanner Perkins. You know, uh, Tanner's still adjusting to the senior high game. Uh and uh, that's a that's a normal that's a normal situation. But you know we've got to uh, we got to be ready 
and, and your thought process as a coach and your thought process as a player is you take it game at a time and you never leave anything on in your gas tank at the end. After it's over with, we tell our seniors every game, starting you know here in February the 28th, I think we play on the 29th, you know, eventually everything comes to an end. And uh, we don't want them to have any regrets. We don't have any regrets as coaches, and we don't have them having any regrets as players. And, um, hey, it's, uh, you know, it's sort of a mental thing right now, getting them well, ready to play. That's the next thing I want to talk about is the mental aspect because some coaches, some coaches who at this point in the season have already clinched their postseason bid. They know they're going to play in the postseason, but they still have regular season games to go. Some coaches – want to maybe lose one or two to get them used to, you know, get them that last loss before they need to win every one from here on out. They want to give them a taste of losing one more time before it's time for the big games. Do you subscribe to that philosophy well, we're thir- in any way? We're 13 and 12, so I think we've uh, got a taste of losing <laughs> quite a bit this year. Uh, you know, I can tell you this. Um, Wow, I have <laughs> never. You uh, got sidetracked. There, I did. I second. did get sidetracked. Where's mine? I think that is yours. Yeah, I want one. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, we, we are, we're getting I folks did, yeah, that sorry, are listening folks. right now. We're getting the uh, autographed pictures of Monica Specking yes. handed out throughout Batons. Yes. And uh, Coach Bowling wants his. Yeah, I want my he picture. He wants to make sure that Monica does not get out of the building exactly. without Coach getting his picture. Uh, but anyway, no, we were talking about. Uh, <laughs> we were talking about uh, uh, your last week of the season, and if a loss would. Oh, be well, I don't. I, I've, I've coached twenty eight years. I've never coached to lose. I, I don't. You know, I just can't do that. That goes against everything, every moral fiber, every everything that I've been taught and believe in. So I'm not going to teach and throw a game. Well, no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say throw. Oh, a I game. think they throw games. I think there's. You a think some of them? Oh, wait a minute. We're going to plug you back in. Which it went right here. So I see what you're talking about. You're actually talking about, uh, hang on, let me plug him in, folks. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. You're actually talking about teams that they take a look at the bracket and they say, you know what, we're going to have an easier road on this side of the bracket than they would on this side of the bracket. But in order to get on that side of the bracket, we're going to have to lose a game in the last week of the season. That's the kind of throwing you're talking about. I'm talking about mentally preparing the kids. Look, this is your last opportunity to lose before we don't want you to lose any more the rest of the way. I can't prepare anybody to lose. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> you know, but there are teams gonna, that do that. They look at that seeding yeah. really seriously and say, Man, if we lost a game right here, this, that would put us in this bracket over here, yeah. and we'd have a way easier road to the championship on that side of the bracket. Yeah. And there are coaches out there that absolutely do that. Right. Well, I'm not one of those. Uh, um, well, I, I, I wouldn't think you are, but I think you and I both know some that are. Uh, you know, I'm not had anybody just come up and tell me that, but you know, there's uh, there's things that happen that makes you wonder about. You know, certain games and, and, and certain things. But you know what? That's all on them. They have to answer to that. And uh, that's something that never crosses me and Jay's mind. Uh, we're just, uh, we play to win. Last night's game, Clifton and I made this remark several times on the air. Last night's game was, I mean, head and shoulders above every other game we've done this year. The best officiating job we have seen. All year long. Well, you never, you never know who, who, they, they did a good job. They did a fantastic job. Everything was consistent on one end of the floor to the other. It was. Um, you know, a three pointer is a three pointer, and if you're stepping on the line, they're going to call it a two pointer. Yeah. I mean, everything was right last week, uh, last night rather. And I, we've we've to- talked so much about officials already the last two or three weeks. Uh, I wonder if there's any way that we could get those refs in the state tournament. <laughs> well, you know, um, like I said, they um, they did a good job last night. Uh, never knew that they were there. Uh, you know, they uh, they to me they did what they were supposed to do, and and that's all you can ask for. Um, you know, that's probably going to be addressed after the season. Uh, the issues that um, you know. 
I'd say 95 percent of the coaches have and we've spoke to uh, you know some people and sort of know where they're at so I think that um, it all get worked out and I think that uh, you'll see a uh, um, a more efficient a more marked consistent improvement we hope for yes. next season yeah. yes uh, and I think we'll do that we uh, Clifton's wrapping up over there with Monica taking care of business over there and you've been on with us for a bit now what we're going to do is take probably one of our final breaks of the morning it's the bottom of the hour break it's going to be an extended break so it'll give you a chance to go over there and finish your omelet and stuff like that and when we come back we're going to we're going to spend the rest of the show with coach scott bowling and it will probably be clifton that comes back on the air with us when we come back here on your primetime sports.com your favorite teams play on your primetime sports.com all right welcome back to batten's donuts with double g sports talk saturday we have coach scott bolin here with us in his segment of talking uh, green county tech basketball uh i don't know what you and the grim man talked about because i was over visiting with monica and her family we talked about monica is that right? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's hey, really, it's was really she not good. really sharp? I mean, she, you know, we. I learned a lot this morning. She's a, a, uh, uh, just a, a fun person to talk to. So, well, the thing that you, the thing that you learn uh, through, uh, you know, years of sports and and uh, meeting people. Uh, you know, she's a professional now. Yep. And. Um, you know, people don't understand. Uh, Skyler's a professional now. And We're going to have him on when he comes home. You know, not only uh, are you good at your craft or what you do, uh, but, you know, there's a way you, you carry yourself. And, uh, you know, she carries herself in a, in a professional manner. And, uh, uh, you know, those people that make money are different. Uh, and they're not hard to, they're not hard to pick out. Right. Uh, why are they different? You know, probably two or three different factors. Uh, great support from their family, um, a gift that God gave them, uh, if whatever they do, and um, just sort of figuring it out how to get it done. Well, I think a lot of times when you get to these levels that, that these folks are in, that uh, someone may take them off to the side and groom them a little bit. You know, a lot of these folks get managers, they get business people, uh, agents, and these type of things. And somewhere along the line, someone pulls them off to the side and says, okay, let me explain to you how you do this when you're in New York City. Well, Skyler, you know, Skyler went to Indianapolis this summer and spent two weeks. And uh, they, um, not only were they training them up there, all the clients, but, uh, you know, they had, they went through some classes and sure. learned how to handle the media and, you uh, just uh, you know what to be careful of. Yeah, and I could see where the media and the the paparazzi was to drive you crazy. You know, I couldn't. You know, we're media, and we interview er- you every week, and we've interviewed you at basketball games and things, like, and all the area coaches we do, and area people and friends. I couldn't be one of these guys to ask one of these stupid questions that uh, would annoy you. You know what I'm saying? Well, but the reason these people that do that, these sports writers that will do that they're, they're trying to trigger uh, a mechanism to to uh, uh you know uh, i don't know what the correct word would be antagonize okay um uh, uh, a coach or uh, a player a player or, yeah. uh you know it, it's not right but it's the world in which we live in and it's always been that way yeah and, you know and where i want to i don't want to report uh, just any kind of news that's gonna all of a sudden send the the world on fire on your primetime sports.com i want to i want to report positive things with our schools and with our coaches and with our players and speaking of that i want to i'm going to step i just want to drop onto this just for a split second and it'll be just a split second for three solid weeks i hammered referees in the 5a east about the quality of refing this week i seen two games coach that i thought was well refed well done. I even I even expressed to them, uh, gentlemen, how good a job they did, and I want them to know that. You know, 
you know me as by being my us being best friends for all these years that I'm going to say what's on my mind and I'm going to give credit where credit's due. Am I correct? Well, you're going to have to if you're going to, you know, if, if you're going to um, criticize someone uh, and then things uh, are better, then you, you've got to, uh, right. you know, you got to give it to where it goes. And I believe in doing that. And I, I, I know that the crew that was at per, uh, Green County Tech Tuesday night that when the Paragool Rams came into the Eagle's Nest, that that's a, I don't care what sport it is or when Paragol and Tech are playing one another, it's a very emotional event, and those three guys, that crew, handled that really well. You know, I talked to uh, one of them. Actually, I talked to the guy who uh, gave me the technical, which I'm sure I probably deserved it. And uh, you know, you did. I was uh, standing right beside you. He's a uh, you know he's <laughs> he's a, a friend of mine, and uh, and I was talking to him after the game, and uh, you know, uh, officials know what kind of game that is and uh you know he said hey that's a that's a that's a mentally exhausting game yes. because uh uh you know i think coach cook commented in the paper not too long ago about the tech paragol game uh, you know we can we can play it down uh, as much as we want to play it down as coaches but uh you know it's still um it's it's a big deal for this county and it's a big deal for these kids and I think the biggest thing that uh, we try to tell our kids uh, going into that game is, um, you know, we want to handle that game um, emotionally just like we would any other game as far as winning and losing. Um, You know, I've said this for uh, a lot of years. Uh, You know, parents, uh, when your kids are participating in uh, sports activities or when they're competing in something, uh, that brings out the worst in everybody when your kid's involved. And, uh, you know, you you got to understand that as well and just hope that you go through that night uh, without any major uh, major uh, things going wrong. Well, and the three guys at baseball, I, I told them in between uh, at halftime of the boys' game because we had already viewed them refing the girls' game and then they had already refed half of your game uh, up to that point. And... Um, when they came over to our table at halftime coming out of their locker room, I told them, I said, guys, y'all are doing a wonderful job. And and I, I've never – there's only one of those guys uh, of the three that I had ever seen before. Uh, the other two I'd never seen in all the uh, – maybe I have. I just didn't remember them. But I'm telling you, they, they did an excellent job last night too in Batesville. So good crew at Batesville. Good crew at the Paragol Tech game. Enough said about the referees. It's positive this week. And I'm going to continue to be that way until I see them otherwise do something wrong. Now, um, let's talk about the game last night. I, I, and I don't know what Graham has talked to you about. But uh, obviously, uh, he played a lot of your bench. Uh, I thought Scotty Maxwell did a great job last night coming off the bench. You don't see Scotty a lot in, in varsity games. Um you gave some boys some opportunities out there, Coach. Well, what we spoke to them about in it during a, a timeout is um, they don't understand. They're being evaluated every day. Uh, they're being evaluated for next year. Some of the guys like Scotty Maxwell. Um, uh, one of the things that's very difficult uh, for uh, a sophomore coming in uh, to play uh, senior high basketball is a lot of them have been uh, very good players at the junior high level and uh, – you know, there's an adjustment period. Uh, most of the time, these guys have a year for an adjustment, but we've had a couple that didn't, you know, they didn't right. have that year at JV, and they've had to come in, and they've uh, made some mistakes, but then again, they've done a lot of good things, and um, it's a grind at the, at the in the 5A East, uh, and it, it really wears on them physically and mentally, and that's the reason in the off season uh, we've got to get back in the weight room and uh, we've got to get stronger, and uh, we we got a lot of things we've got to do. But um, I'm very pleased and, and excited for these seniors. Um, you know that they went through a very difficult season last year, and um, you know six weeks ago we were four and nine, and uh, we'd pretty much been written off by everybody. And uh, they had been picked to finish seventh out of eight teams in the league. And um, you know to what they to, to to what they've accomplished up to this point. Uh, it says a lot about them, and, and it says a lot about their team, and so we're real excited about that. And uh, you know, we're, we are in the playoffs again the, with the win last night and a couple of losses. So uh, you know, uh, 
to be there seven out of nine years uh, says a lot about our program. Well, and it does. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say something on the air this morning that I think I said to David last night on the air when we were broadcasting the game. Um, something was said to me about your style of play and this and that and 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 i said let me tell you something you correct me if i'm wrong coach let me tell you something coach scott bowling and his team along with coach jay robertson would not be in the position that they're in right now if it wasn't the way he taught defense that is a big key at green county tech if you want to play basketball green county tech you have to learn defense well we're you know we we sort of hang our hat on that um a lot of coaches don't teach that well, you know, um, it's an old cliche, it's an old saying, and, um, and a bit it's a true saying, defense wins championships. And, uh, you know, we have two rings to show for it. And uh, even though we had some very good offensive players, uh, the people we played in the state championship games and in the state tournament, they had good offensive players too. So um, you know, we, we spent a lot of time, we talk a lot of ta- a lot about uh, playing defense, and, and that's probably the, uh, one of the biggest adjustments for a, a sophomore is uh, coming in there, and um, you know we like to say we we grind it out, and right. uh, and this team is a, uh, they're a bunch of grinders. Uh, you know they're not the most talented team that Tech's ever had, or uh, will they be? But you know they're, they they got to be pretty tough kids to uh, to do what they've done. Well, and, and they are, and and to touch on what you said a minute ago before I kind of uh, strayed a little bit with uh, the defense is you have to be really uh, excited uh, about, and I know you don't have a whole lot of thought on it right now because you're still in the midst of this season. You still have two conference games, and then you have your host in the state playoffs. So you have a lot on your back burner right now. But you have to be excited about next year's upcoming season. You're only losing three seniors. Now one of them's, one of them's Andrew Ferguson. He's very probably one of the top athletic players in the league. But you have a good nucleus of of nucleus of, uh, of, of okay. sophomores and juniors right now, and then you have a good junior high coming up. Uh, well, we have a good core coming yeah. back, and uh, you know uh, we have Andrew and uh, Heath coming back in the back court, and we feel like next year they should be the best back court, and uh, all right, we feel like they could be one of the best back courts in five A. Yeah, uh, you know they've been playing since they were sophomores, and uh, Heath uh, has just gotten better and better. Uh, this year, and so was Andrew. Uh, but you know, uh, we we are excited. You know, uh, we we do like what we have coming back, and we and we do like what we have coming up. So uh, you know, it's just going to be uh, me and Jay's. Uh, you know, it's our responsibility to uh, get them ready, and uh, that will start uh, after spring break. Now, uh, you mentioned Heath a couple of times. The last couple of times you've been on the show. I noticed someone that comes off the bench for you uh, the last couple of games that I felt like has has I've seen him get better and better, and I think he's done a quality job for you. Is his twin brother Hunter? Oh, Hunter's done. Oh, cornbread. Yeah, he's done a great yeah, job. You know, Graham called him out last night. I'm like, dude, we're not, you know, <laughs> cornbread. So, but yeah, he he's come off the uh, come off the bench and uh, done some done some quality played some quality minutes for you. Well, I think I think probably uh, the biggest thing that that he's been able to do, or it seems like it, uh, is uh, he has uh, understood now uh, what his role is, and uh, he. Uh, <laughs> hey, Newberry, go on, man. Uh, Coach Lowell and I just became tickled because Newberry said, uh, "If you wasn't on there right now, I'd slap your head." <laughs> go ahead and uh, interrupt you. You know he. Uh, He's really understood what his role is, and and he does a, a re- really good job. You know, if he was six foot one, six foot two, uh, and um, as smart as he is uh, playing basketball, I mean, he would be one of the best players in our league. Uh, but he does a, a outstanding job for what we want, and uh, you know, he just got to continue to do so. Yeah. Well, and you know, and you've heard me mention this player. I mean, you you just got some good quality stuff coming up but i love lane lane earls now uh, lane uh, you know i, I seen uh, i tell you what i seen last night and you can correct me if i'm wrong they kind of got a little sluggish early when lane came into the game you know he didn't start he came off the bench 
First trip down the floor, he did something. I don't know what he did. He did something wrong. I think he let a guy get by him or something, drive to the basket, scored. You called timeout. Boy, you kind of you let him have it. Well, you know what? When you came back out on the floor, he stepped it up a little bit. He made a couple of buckets, boom, boom, a couple well, of pretty jump shots. Well, we need uh, we, we need Lane Earls to uh, bring his A game every night. And he got a little foul trouble last night. He did, but you know what? That was good to see. At least he was aggressive and uh you know, if we're going to uh, have any type of opportunity to uh, uh, make some noise in the state tournament, he's one of those guys that uh, he's got to he's got to be on top of his game. He's got to be ready emotionally, uh, physically, and uh, he's got to be playing with some confidence. And I think last night was uh, a good uh, a good outing for him. Yeah, well, good. And uh, so, but anyway, last Saturday you had made the comment that uh, we had four games left, and uh, you needed to pick up two victories out of those four games left. Well, you picked them both up this week. So how do you feel today? Oh, I feel great. We're in the playoffs, you know. Um, you know, we've only been out of the playoffs uh, for a year, but I'll be honest, it seemed like it's been five years. Because mm-hmm. uh, you went, what, seven years in a row? Uh, Eight years? Six, in a, six years, six in, years a in a row. Six out of seven. Um, and, you know, it, whether or not it's um, – good or not it's sort of expected now of uh our program to make the playoffs every year and and but you know what that's okay because we expect to make it every year uh and then you know we're one of those teams i've i always tell our guys you know there's 16 teams in the playoffs eight of those teams they're just glad they're there right and there's about five of them that's hoping they can make win a game so they can miss school all week and then there's two or three that think they got a chance to win it. Well, we want to be one of those two or three every year that think we have a chance to win it. And, you know, that's the way, even though we're going to end up being third in our in our league, um, we, we feel like that we have a chance to get the hot springs as good as anybody. But, hey, and, and, you know, what's good about this and what you're saying is, you know, we want to be in the playoffs every year. That's a difficult thing when we're talking about high school basketball, and I don't care what level, at any level. It's a difficult thing to do that because here's the deal. This is not college. We don't get to go out here and pick players. Right. We have to take with what we get. Right. And right. if all of a sudden we have a uh, shortage of heights on the team or a shortage of ball handlers or a shortage of whatever, then it's up to the coaches to regroup and rebuild and You've done a quality job with that year in and year out. You've had good assistance with Coach Rich and Coach Robertson. Uh, I noticed an, another one of my best buds uh, to, this morning in the Jonesboro Sun is once again in the finals at Corning. Uh, Manila is mm-hmm. playing Earl at 730 tonight. I'm going to drive up to uh, Corning tonight, and I'm going to support Manila and support my friend. And uh, it's just amazing uh, – you know, the quality of coaches that, that you guys are that you get the most out of some of the least talent on some of these basketball programs. Well, And I love to see that. Well, you know, first of all, it says a lot about the kid himself uh, that, uh, you know, we always talk about trust and, and, and commitment. And, uh, you know, for us to be successful, uh, those guys have got to trust us 100%. And uh, they've got to understand that, um, you know, we, uh, we we want what's best for them on and off the court. Um, it's really a uh, – it's been really uh, a good thing for me and Jay to uh, see these guys mature. You know, we've had uh, the Democrat, they'll call, and, you know, we were 4-9, and nine, like I said, six weeks ago, and now we're 13-12, and 12, and, and they want to know what the difference is. I, I don't really have an answer for that other than the fact that, uh, the, the the confidence level uh, came up, and and plus we played a really really tough non conference, and you never know how that's going to pan out when you're playing that tough non conference. Right. Uh, it can get you in a position to where you sink, or uh, y- your kids understand it, and and we have to let them understand why we've done it. Well, when you play that tough conference, you either sink or swim. Yeah, right. Like you said, and, and, so there's you, there's no other option. Right. And we're swimming this time. Yeah, there you, you know, go. So uh, Last year, you know, we probably didn't uh, handle the non-conference like we did this year. Well, we're going to call it a morning, Coach. Thank you once again for coming up at uh, Batten's Donuts and visiting us and letting our listeners uh, uh, to uh, have our listeners here 
your opinions and the things about Green County Tech basketball. So we will have you on again next Saturday as we're wrapping up the uh, season finale this week. Uh, two more two more games, one on the road, one at home. So we'll return in a couple of minutes at Batten's Donuts, and uh, uh, Graham and I will uh, wrap up here with Double G Sports Talk Saturday. Thanks a lot. Your favorite teams play on yourprimetimesports.com. Welcome back to your primetimesports.com, Double G Sports Talk Saturday, wrapping up another Saturday morning here at Batten's Donuts and Bakery. Uh, here's what we've got on tap for the coming week. We've got our final basketball broadcast of the season. That will be Tuesday night at Blyville. Green County Tech Lady Eagles and Eagles will face off against the uh, Lady Chickasaws and Chickasaws, respectively. And then uh, we won't be on the air again until next Saturday. After that, we'll be Well, let's talk about for, Thursday, uh, though. That's senior night at Green County Tech. That'll be when? That'll, yeah, they, they, we won't be there. Yeah, we won't be there tonight, but, we, but just want to let our listeners know that is senior night. Uh, that is the last home game before the state playoffs. So. And that very same night, Paragool will be traveling to BB for their final game, regular season game right. of the season. And then we'll be on the air Saturday for Double G Sports Talk. Saturday we'll have the brackets in hand for the state tournaments. Not just the 5A East, or not just the uh, 5A, right. but we'll have all the brackets. We'll go over and look at where Marmaduke or where uh, CRA or where our area teams are going to be playing in their respective state tournaments. We're going to do that next Saturday. We'll have more guests for you. Um, Clifton, you got anything you want to add before we sign well, just, off for the day? I, no, I just want to thank our guest, Coach Bruce Hunt, uh, to talk about the baseball program at Green County Tech this morning. Hopefully we can get Coach Faulkner, Coach Shatsley, the girls' softball coach at Perigo on here pretty soon so we can talk about the Rams program. Uh, I want to thank Monica uh, Specking for coming in and talking about uh, her uh, bodybuilding and the stylist and all that. I'm going to be posting a link to yes. her Facebook page on our Facebook page within the next half hour or so, so people can go on there. She'll and, appreciate uh, that, and we want. And she took in. all kinds of. They took all kinds of pictures. Yeah, a lot of here. people here in the restaurant had their picture made with her. And she's and, going to post those on her Facebook. Yeah, she uh, had. Uh, she brought some some eight by tens and handed out some autographs, and so it's been a fun morning. And. Uh, you know, we're, we're growing and we're watching people do some phenomenal things with their lives. And uh, so we're having fun. All right. We are going to be done for the day. I'm Dave Grimm. That's Clifton Garmouth. We'll see you Tuesday night from Blyville.